the second broad class of criteria used for microbial taxonomy is the molecular characteristics or the molecular traits so uh, the molecular traits basically is the analysis of nucleic acids and proteins that means nucleic acid in the sense dna and rna and also the protein sequences and this already we have seen in the phylogenetic analysis that these analysis these molecular analysis of sequences will help help in the construction of phylogenetic tree right and uh, there are different methods various methods are there for the study of uh, these molecular sequences right so in which some of them are listed like nucleic acid base composition nucleic acid hybridization studies then sequencing studies and uh, uh, various other studies are there so we will see a few of them in detail right so there are molecular methods which are very important for or which are very much helping in the classification of microorganisms they are helping in both in case of phylogenetic analysis and also in case of numerical taxonomy the first one is nucleic acid base composition so uh, you know the base composition you know we know that dna is a is a nucleic acid which is composed of nucleotides these nucleotides are either of uh, they mean usually we the we represent the nucleotides in the in the uh, form of the nucleo in the form of the nitrogenous bases that means adenine guanine cytosine and thiamine so these bases these four bases are there in every dna molecule and the composition that means what percentage of adenine guanine cytosine and thiamine are present in a particular nucleic acid will be analyzed in this particular part right so the composition of a nucleic nucleic acid e will be or the base composition of the nucleic acid will be analyzed and for that we use a particular strategy called g plus c content determination so here we determine the g plus c content or it is represented as mole percentage of g plus c that means the molecular composition or molecular percentage of uh, g plus c so the equation is g plus c divided by whole the number all the bases number into 100 this will give you the mole percentage of g plus c and this g plus c content can be determined by hydrolysis of the dna and analysis using certain certain techniques like uh, liquid chromatography by that you will get the percentage of g plus c right or in other ways you can also determine in by a simple process in which the dna uh, is melted uh, uh, and after melting uh, of a double stranded dna you know uh, we will get a, a melting curve and from there also you can find out the g plus c content or the percentage of g plus c right so uh, when when you go for the second method that means the melting method when the temperature increases this is the melting curve uh, and we'll have an explanation for that yeah dna with uh, greater g plus c content will have more hydrogen bonds definitely because you know uh, the gc bases are connected g and g the guanine of one of the strand and cytosine of the opposite strand are connected together by three hydrogen bonds whereas adenine of one of the strand and uh, thiamine of the opposite strand are connected by two hydrogen bonds right so if a double stranded dna has more gc bases or more gc bonding then in order to separate these double strand into single strand we will have to apply more temperature right so these temperature we will calculate and indirectly we can say that if you need more temperature to dissociate a double stranded dna into single strand if the temperature is uh, uh, required in high amount then we can indirectly predict that this dna consists of more gc e, gc bases right so dna melting point can be easily followed so how do how do we detect the melting point it is by observing uh, uh, um, the absorbance in a spectrophotometer because you know dna absorb uh, uv light at 260 nanometer right and when the uh, dna undergoes melting when the dna undergoes melting there will be an increase in absorption right when the dna is in a single stranded manner the absorption increases right and this particular process is what we call the hyperchromic shift 
that means the absorption of uv light increases when the dna is in the single stranded format than in the double stranded format right so uh, it's like when a dna sample is slowly heated then uh, then we uh, uh, the absorbance is recorded then you can see that there is an gradual increase in the absorbance as the hydrogen bonds are broken then accordingly you can find out uh, uh, you can you can plot this value into a graph and you can find out the melting point that is the half the uh, half of the dna will undergoes melting right or the temperature uh, at which half of the dna molecules are uh, undergone melting is the melting point right so from that you can calculate the the uh, melting point or the melting temperature and also the uh, accordingly from the melting point you can calculate the g plus e right so the g plus e content uh, is different for different organisms each species will have a particular g plus e content usually uh, in bacteria or in prokaryotes usually the g plus e content is most variable ranging from 25 to 80 percentage right and if an organism or if a species is having a difference of about 10 percentage in g plus e content then it will be a different organism <coughs> And here you can see some representative uh, examples of G plus E content, right? So bacillus will have a G plus E content of 32 to 62, right? You can see the difference. The Clostridium will have 21 to 54. Salmonella will have uh, 50 to 53. So in that way, these prokaryotes or these organisms will have G plus E content. Now the second uh, uh, criteria under molecular method is the nucleic acid hybridization. <clears throat> so hybridization studies will give you an information regarding both the homology of sequences and also about uh, the composition of the nucleic acid. Right. The process is comparatively simple. Then uh, a single stranded mixture that means uh, in first we have to isolate the DNA of two organisms you need to compare then uh, these two DNA molecules are melted to obtain single strands then these single stranded DNA are mixed together into a single container then allow to allow to uh, what uh, reassociate that means we uh, provide a lower temperature that means cooled to the lower temperature at around 25 degrees Celsius then uh, that means below below the melting point then that will uh, uh, that will allow the complementary pairing of the bases right and if the two organisms are uh, having the homologous sequences there is a possibility that there will be cross pairing that means the strand from organism one will pair with a complementary strand from organism two so in that way you can find out whether there is a hybrid formation a hybrid nucleic acid strand formation is there or not right so this gives an idea about that see in the first part you have uh, double stranded dna and these double stranded dna have been originated from different organism and they are melted and after melting there will be reassociation renaturation and renaturation uh, may occur from uh, uh, by the reunion of different single stranded dna from different sources now uh, nucleic acid sequencing uh, sequencing is a very useful tool uh, because when you know the sequence of the entire sequence of DNA or nucleic acid, it will be much helpful for identification of organism. It provides a, a wide coverage of identification. All the levels of hierarchical levels of organisms will be uh, will be identified by nucleic acid sequencing studies, right? Usually, uh, the, the DNA or RNA sequence are, are, are performed and preferably uh, the rRNA sequence because this is one of the most conserved sequence. 16S rRNA in case of prokaryotes and 18S rRNA in case of eukaryotes are preferred. Right. Then uh, actually how do we perform nucleic acid sequencing? This is purely we perform uh, sequencing by means of uh, uh, the, we, we have a, a previous step of uh, uh, we have a preparatory step for sequencing that is what we call the PCR polymerase chain reaction or, or the amplification of the sequence to be uh, sequenced and that is done by uh, the steps provided here. The DNA is isolated 
and uh, the primer is provided and the, uh, the performance of PCR that means amplification with the help of DNA polymerase actually the TAC polymerase enzyme and the copies are obtained then these copies are uh, actually you know checked by uh, electrophoresis for purity then after that the sequencing is performed right then the sequencing is performed by various methods like Sanger's method, Maxim Gilbert or more advanced next generation sequencing methods. Uh, we are not discussing uh, here the sequencing method in detail. You just have an outline about sequencing. <coughs> this will give you uh, a detailed representation of uh, sequencing by Sanger's method or this otherwise called chain termination method. Right. So... Uh, a discussion at this point of time may not be useful i'm not going into that i'm not uh, trying to discuss this one right we will discuss these things in, in detail in some other video then uh, amino acid sequencing is also just like nucleic acid sequencing amino acid sequencing is also useful for uh, identification and classification of organism because you know uh, amino acids uh, are directly uh, related to the sequence of mrna and mrna indirectly to the genes right so the uh, protein sequences or the amino acid sequences are determined and usually with the help of various techniques and one of the common method is called edman degradation so by that uh, we can determine the sequence of a protein and when you get the sequence of protein that will give that will help you identify uh, uh, the organisms so there will be different proteins in organism so usually the similar homologous proteins are taken for these kind of studies uh, the the protein uh, uh, for example the protein x from bacteria a and bacteria b is taken so the x is the common protein that means homologous protein so we'll sequence these protein x so uh, after that we'll compare the sequences if you find any difference between the uh, the same protein of two organism which means that they have uh, some some changes right these two organisms have some uh, some some uh, dissimilarities if the two uh, organisms have the same sequence for the x protein then these two organisms are showing similarity in that mat matter so in that way this sequencing is helpful so this gives you uh, uh, the coverage of different molecular methods in terms of their identification genome sequencing covers all even to the strain level right genus species or oh, everything will be covered under genome sequencing whereas the 16s uh, uh, rrna or rdna sequencing help in the genus up to genus level and g plus c content determination helps in species level then hybridization also uh, up to the species level then various things are there so this is the relative comparative uh, uh, resolution of various molecular methods Okay, so that's all for the molecular methods and these are the different references taken for the entire microbial taxonomy. You can refer for that and uh, thank you for listening all these part of microbial taxonomy. Thank you.